Act Three of the Tragedy of King Lear by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One A Heath. A storm with thunder and lightning. Enter Kent and a gentleman severally. Who's there besides foul weather? One minded like the weather, most unquietly. I know you. Where's the king? Contending with the fretful elements. Bids the wind blow the earth into the sea, or swell the curled waters above the main, that things might change or cease. Tears his white hair, which the impetuous blasts with eyeless rage catch in their fury and make nothing of. Strives in his little world of man to outscorn the to and fro conflicting wind and rain this night wherein the cup drawn bear would couch the lion and the belly pinched wolf keep their fur dry unbonneted he runs and bids what will take all but who is with him none but the fool who labours to outjest his heart-struck injuries sir i know you and dare upon the warrant of my note commend a dear thing to you there is division, although as yet the face of it be covered with mutual cunning, twixt Albany and Cornwall, who have, as who have not, that their great stars throned and set high, servants who seem no less, which are to France the spies and speculations intelligent of our state. What hath been seen, either in snuffs and packings of the dukes, or the hard rain which both of them have borne against the old kind king, or something deeper, whereof perchance these are but furnishings, but true it is, from France there comes a power into this scattered kingdom, who already, wise in our negligence, have secret feet in some of our best ports, and are at point to show their open banner. Now to you, if on my credit you dare build so far to make your speed to Dover, you shall find some that will thank you, making just report of how unnatural and bemadding sorrow the king hath caused a plain. I am a gentleman of blood and breeding and from some knowledge and assurance offer this office to you. I will talk further with you. No, do not. For confirmation that I am much more than my oat wall, open this purse and take what it contains. If you shall see Cordelia, as fear not but you shall, show her this ring, and she will tell you who your fellow is that yet you do not know. Fie on this storm! I will go seek the king. Give me your hand. Have you no more to say? few words but to effect more than all yet that when we have found the king in which your pain that way all this he that first lights on him holler the other exeunt scene two another part of the heath storm continues enter lear and fool Blow winds and crack your cheeks. Rage, blow, you cataracts and hurricane spout, till you have drenched our steeples, drowned the cocks. You sulphurous and thought executing fires, vaunt couriers to oak cleaving thunderbolts, singe my white head. And thou, O oh, shaking thunder, strike flat the thick rotundity of the world. Crack nature's moulds, all German spill at once that make ingrateful men. Oh, n uncle, court holly water in a dry house is better than this rain water out of door. Good n uncle, in and uh, ask thy daughter's blessing. Here's a night pities neither wise men nor fools. Rumble thy bellyful, spit fire, spout rain, nor rain, wind, thunder, fire are my daughters. I tax not you, you elements with unkindness. I never gave you kingdom, called you children. You owe me no subscription. Then let fall your horrible pleasure. Here I stand your slave, a poor, infirm, weak, and despised old man. But yet I call you servile ministers, that will with two pernicious daughters join your high-engendered battles gainst a head, 
so old and white as this oh oh she is foul he that has a house to put's head in has a good headpiece the codpiece that will house before the head has any the head and he shall louse so beggars marry many the man that makes his toe what he his heart should make shall of a corn cry woe and turn his sleep to wake for there was never yet fair woman but she made mouths in a glass no i will be the pattern of all patience i will say nothing enter kent who's there mary here's grace in a codpiece that's a wise man and a fool alas sir are you here things that love night love not such nights as these the wrathful skies gallow the very wanderers of the dark and make them keep their caves since i was mad such sheets of fire such bursts of horrid thunder such groans of roaring wind and rain i never remember to have heard men's nature cannot carry the affliction nor the fear let the great gods that keep this dreadful putter o'er our heads find out their enemies now tremble thou wretch that hast within thee undivulged crimes unwhipped of justice hide thee thou bloody hand thou perjured and thou similar of virtue that art incestuous caitiff to pieces shake that under covert and convenient seeming hast practised on man's life close pent-up guilts writhe your concealing continence and cry these dreadful summoners grace i am a man more sinned against than sinning alack bareheaded gracious my lord hard by here is a hovel some friendship will it lend you gainst the tempest repose you there whilst i to this hard house more harder than the stones whereof tis raised which even but now demanding after you denied me to come in return and force their scanted courtesy my wits begin to turn come on my boy how dost my boy art cold i am cold myself where is this straw my fellow the art of necessities is strange that can make vile thing precious come your hovel poor fool and knave i have one part in my heart that's sorry yet for thee he that has and a little tiny wit with high ho the wind and the rain must make content with his fortunes fit though the rain it rain it every day true boy come bring us to this hovel exeunt lear and kent this is a brave night to cool a courtesan i'll speak a prophecy ere i go when priests are more in word than matter when brewers mar their malt with water when nobles are their tailors tutors no heretics burned but wenches suitors when every case in law is right no squire in debt nor no poor knight when slanders do not live in t -t tongues nor cut purses come not to throngs when usurers sell their gold in the field and bods and whores do churches build then shall the realm of albion come to great confusion then comes the time who lives to see it that going shall be used with the feet this prophecy merlin shall make for i live before his time see <laughs> exit scene three a room in gloucester's castle enter gloucester and edmund I rack i lack edward i like not this unnatural dealing when i desired their leave that i might pity him they took 
from me the use of mine own house charged me on pain of perpetual displeasure neither to speak of him entreat for him or any way sustain him most savage and unnatural go to say you nothing there is division between the dukes and a worse matter than that i have received a letter this night it is dangerous to be spoken i have locked the letter in my closet these injuries the king now bears will be revenged home there is part of a power already footed we must incline to the king i will look him and privily relieve him go you and maintain talk with the duke that my charity be not of him perceived if he ask for me i am ill and gone to bed if i die for it as no less is threatened me the king my old master must be relieved there is some strange thing toward edmund pray you be careful exit this courtesy forbid thee shall the duke instantly know and of that letter too this seems a fair deserving and must draw me that which my father loses no less than all the younger rises when the old doth fall exit scene four a part of the heath with a hovel storm continues enter lear kent and fool here is the place my lord good my lord enter the tyranny of the open nights too rough for nature to endure let me alone good my lord enter here wilt break my heart i could rather break mine own good my lord enter thou thinkest tis much that this contentious storm invades us to the skin so tis to thee but where the greater malady is fixed the lesser is scarce felt thou dost shun a bear but if thy flight lay toward the raging sea thou dost meet the bear i the mouth when the mind's free the body's delicate the tempest in my mind doth from my senses take all feeling else save what beats there filial ingratitude it is not as this mouth should tear this hand for lifting footed but i will punish home no i will weep no more in such a night to shut me out pour on i will endure in such a night as this old regan goneril your old kind father whose frank heart gave all oh that way madness lies let me shun that no more of that good my lord enter here prithee go in thyself seek thine own ease this tempest will not give me leave to ponder on things would hurt me more but i'll go in to the fool in boy go first you houseless poverty nay get thee in i'll pray and then i'll sleep fool goes in poor naked wretches wheresoe'er you are that bide the pelting of this pitiless storm how shalt your houseless heads and unfed sides your lupid and windowed raggedness defend you from seasons such as these oh i have ta'en too little care of this take physic pomp expose thyself to feel what wretches feel that thou mayest shake the superflux to them and show the heavens more just edgar within father meant of father meant of oh, poor tom the fool runs out from the hovel g g g come not in here uncle he hears the spirit oh, oh help me help me give me thy hand who's there a spirit oh, a spirit he, he says his name's poor tom what art thou that dost grumble there in the straw come forth enter edgar disguised as a madman away the foul fiend follows me through the sharp hawthorn blows the cold wind 
go to thy cold bed and warm thee didst thou give all to thy two daughters and art thou come to this who gives anything to poor tom whom the foul fiend hath led through fire and through flame through ford and whirlpool over bog and quagmire that hath laid knives under his pillow and halters in his pew set ratsbane by his porridge made him proud of heart to ride on a bay trotting horse over four-inched bridges to course his own shadow for a traitor bless thy five wits tom's a cold oh doody 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 bless thee from whirlwinds star-blasting and taking do poor tom some charity whom the foul fiend vexes there could i have him now and there and there again and there storm continues what have his daughters brought him to this pass couldst thou save nothing didst thou give em all nay he reserved a blanket else we had been all shamed thou all plagues that in the pendulous air hang fated all men's faults light on thy daughters he hath no daughter sir death traitor nothing could have subdued nature to such a loneliness but his unkind daughters is it the fashion that discarded fathers should have thus little mercy on their flesh judicious punishment twas this flesh begot those pelican daughters oh pillicock sat on pillicock hill oh, hello, hello, roo, roo. this cold night will turn us all to fools and madmen take heed of the foul fiend obey thy parents keep thy word justly swear not commit not with man sworn spouse set not thy sweetheart on proud array oh tom's a cold what hast thou been a serving man proud in heart and mind that curled my hair wore gloves in my cap served the lust of my mistress heart and did the act of darkness with her swore as many oaths as i spake words and broke them in the sweet face of heaven one that slept in the contriving of lust and wake to do it wine loved i deeply dies dearly and in woman out paramour the turk falls of heart light of ear bloody of hand hog in sloth fox in stealth wolf in greediness dog in madness lion in prey let not the creaking of shoes nor the rustling of silks betray thy poor heart to woman keep thy foot out of brothels thy hand out of placards thy pen from lander's book and defy the foul fiend still through the hawthorn blows the cold wind say soon on me doth in my boy boy Cessa, let him trot by storm still continues why thou wert better in thy grave than to answer with thy uncovered body this extremity of the skies is man no more than this consider him well thou owest the worm no silk the beast no hide the sheep no wool the cat no perfume ha here's three ons are sophisticated thou art the thing itself an accommodated man in no more but such a poor bare forked animal as thou art off off you lendings come unbutton here 
tears off his clothes. <laughs> Pretty, Uncle, be contented. <laughs> Tis a naughty night to swim in. Now a little fire in a wild field. We're like an old lecher's heart. A small spark. All the rest ums body cold. L look, here comes a walking fire. This is the foul fiend, Flibberty Gibbert. He begins at curfew and walks till the first cock. He gives the web and the pin, squints the eye, and makes the hair lip, mildews the white wheat, and hurts the poor creature of earth. Oh, swift hold footed thrice the old. Oh, he met the nightmare and her ninefold. Ah, bid her alight and her troth plight. Ah, ah, and a roin thee, witch, a roin thee. How fares your grace? Enter Gloucester with a torch. Who she? Who's there? Who is you seek? What are you there? Your names? Poor Tom that eats the swimming frog, the toad, the tadpole, the wall newt, and the water, that in the fury of his heart, when the foul fiend rages, eats cow dung for salads, swallows the old rat and the ditch dog drinks the green mantle of the standing pool who is whipped from tithing to tithing and stocked punished and imprisoned who has had three suits to his back six shirts to his body a uh, uh, horse to ride and weapon to wear <laughs> but mice and rats and such small deer <laughs> have been tom's food for seven long year beware my follower peace malkin peace thou fiend what have your grace no better company the prince of darkness is a gentleman modo he is called and mahu Ah, flesh and blood, my lord, is grown so vile that it doth hate what gets it. Oh, poor Tom's a cold. Go in with me. My duty cannot suffer to obey in all your daughter's hard commands, though they are injunction me to bar my doors and let this tyrannous night take hold upon you. Yet have I ventured to come seek you out, and bring you where both fire and food is ready first let me talk with this philosopher what is the cause of thunder good my lord take his offer go into the house oh i'll talk a word with this same learned theban what is your study how to prevent the fiend and to kill vermin let me ask you one word in private Importune him once more to go, my lord. His wits begin to unsettle. Canst thou blame him? His daughter seek his death. Ah, that good Kent. He said it would be thus. Poor banished man. Thou sayest the king grows mad. I'll tell thee, friend, I am almost mad myself. I had a son now outlawed from my blood he sought my life but lately very late i loved him friend no father his son dearer true to tell thee storm continues the grief hath crazed my wits what a night's this i do beseech your grace oh cry you mercy sir noble philosopher your company tom's a cold in fellow there into the hovel keep thee warm come 
let's in all this way my lord with him i will keep still with my philosopher good my lord soothe him let him take the fellow take him you on sirrah come on go along with us come good athenian no words no words hush oh child roll into the dark tower came ah his word was still fie fo and fum ah i smell the blood of a british man exeunt scene five a room in gloucester's castle enter cornwall and edmund i will have my revenge ere i depart his house how oh, my lord i may be censured that nature thus gives way to loyalty something fears me to think of i now perceive it was not altogether your brother's evil disposition made him seek his death but a provoking merit set a work by a reprovable badness in himself how malicious is my fortune that i must repent to be just this is the letter he spoke of which approves him an intelligent party to the advantages of france oh heavens that this treason were not or not i the detector go with me to the duchess if the matter of this paper be certain you have mighty business in hand true or false it hath made the earl of gloucester seek out where thy father is that he may be ready for our apprehension edmund aside if i find him comforting the king it will stuff his suspicion more fully i will persevere in my course of loyalty though the conflict be sore between that and my blood i will lay trust upon thee and thou shalt find a dearer father in my love exeunt scene six a chamber in a farmhouse adjoining the castle enter gloucester lear kent fool and edgar here is better than the open air take it thankfully i will piece out the comfort with what addition i can i will not be long from you all the power of his wits have given way to his impatience the gods reward your kindness exit gloucester Fraderetto calls me and tells me nero is an angler in the lake of darkness pray innocent and beware the foul fiend Frithy, uncle tell me whether a madman be a gentleman or a yeoman her king her king no he's a yeoman that has a gentleman to his son for he's a mad yeoman that sees his son a gentleman before him to have a thousand with red burning spits come hissing in upon him the foul fiend bites my back he's mad that trusts in the tameness of a wolf Ow! a horse's health <laughs> a boy's love <laughs> or a whore's oath <laughs> it shall be done i will arraign them straight to edgar come sit thou here most learned justice sir to the fool now sapien sir sit here now you she foxes look where he stands and glares once thou eyes at trial madam oh, oh, come over the bourne bessie to me her both hath a leak and she must not speak why she dares not come over to thee the foul fiend taunts poor tom in the voice of a nightingale hop dance cries in tom's belly for two white herring croak not black angel i have no food for thee how do you sir stand you not so amazed will you lie down and rest upon the cushions i'll see their trial first 
bring in their evidence to edgar thou robed man of justice take thy place to the fool and thou his yoke fellow of equity bench by his side to kent you are of the commission sit you too <laughs> let us deal justly <laughs> sleepest or wakest thou jolly shepherd <laughs> thy sheep be in the corn <laughs> and for one blast of thy minikin mouth <laughs> thy sheep shall take no harm Purr. the cat is grey rain her first tis goneril i here take my oath before this honourable assembly she kicked the poor king her father come hither mistress is your name goneril she cannot deny it cry you mercy i took you for a joint stool and here's another whose warped looks proclaim what store her heart is made on stop her there arms arms sword fire corruption in the place false justice sir why hast thou let her scape bless thy five wits o oh, pity sir where is the patience now that you so oft have boasted to retain edgar aside my tears begin to take his part so much they mar my counterfeiting the little dogs you know pray blanche and sweetheart see they Bark at me. Tom will throw his head at them. Avaunt, you curse. <gasps> Be thy mouth all black or white. <sighs> Tooth that poisons if it bite. <sighs> Mastiff, greyhound, mongrel grim. <sighs> Hound or spaniel, brack or him ah or bobtail tyke or trundle tail oh, oh tom will make them weep and wail oh, oh, for with throwing thus my head dogs leap the hatch and all are fled do de 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 cesar come march to wakes and fairs and market towns poor tom thy horn is dry then let them anatomize regan see what breeds about her heart is there any cause in nature that makes these hard hearts to edgar you sir i entertain you for one of my hundred only i do not like the fashion of your garments you'll say they are persian but let them be changed now good my lord lie here and rest awhile make no noise make no noise draw the curtains so so we will go to supper in the morning Shh. and i'll go to bed at noon <laughs> enter gloucester come hither friend where is the king my master here sir but trouble him not his wits are gone good friend i prithee well, take him with thy arms i have overheard a plot of death upon him there is a litter ready lament and drive towards dover friend where thou shalt meet both welcome and protection take up thy master if thou shouldst dally half an hour his life with thine and all that offer to defend him stand in assured loss we'll take up we'll take up and follow me that will to some provision give thee quick conduct oppress nature sleeps this rest might yet have bombed thy broken sinews which if convenience will not allow stand in hard cure come help to bear thy master to the fool thou must not stay behind come come away 
Exeunt Kent, Gloucester, and the Fool bearing off Lear. When we our better see bearing our woes, we scarcely think our miseries are foes. Who alone suffers, suffers most in the mind, leaving free things and happy shows behind. But then the mind much sufferance doth overskip when grief hath mates and bearing fellowship how light and portable my pain seems now when that which makes me bend makes the king bow he childed as i fathered <sighs> tom away mark the high noises and thyself be ray when false opinion whose wrong thoughts defile thee in thy just proof repeals and reconciles thee what will hap more to-night save scape the king lurk lurk exit scene seven a room in gloucester's castle enter cornwall regan goneril edmund and servants post speedily to my lord your husband show him this letter the army of france is landed seek out the traitor gloucester exeunt some of the servants hang him instantly pluck out his eyes leave him to my displeasure edmund keep you our sister company the revenges we are bound to take upon your traitorous father are not fit for your beholding advise the duke where you are going to a more festinate preparation we are bound to the like our posts shall be swift and intelligent betwixt us farewell dear sister farewell my lord of gloucester enter oswald how now where's the king my lord of gloucester hath conveyed him hence some five or six and thirty of his knights hard questrists after him met him at the gate who with some other of the lord's dependents are gone with him toward dover where they boast to have well-armed friends get horses for your mistress farewell sweet lord and sister edmund farewell exeunt goneril edmund and oswald go seek the traitor gloucester pinion him like a thief bring him before us exeunt other servants though well we may not pass upon his life without the form of justice yet our power shall do a courtesy to our wrath which men may blame but not control who's there the traitor enter gloucester and servants ingrateful fox tis he bind fast his corky arms what mean your graces good my friends consider you are my guests do me no foul play friends bind him i say servants bind him heart heart oh filthy traitor unmerciful lady as you are i am none to this chair bind him villain thou shalt find regan plucks his beard by the kind gods tis most ignobly done to pluck me by the beard so white and such a traitor naughty lady these hairs which thou dost ravish from my chin will quicken and accuse thee i am your host with robber's hands my hospitable favours you should not ruffle thus what will you do come sir what letters had you late from france be simple answered for we know the truth and what confederacy have you with the traitors late footed in the kingdom to whose hands have you sent the lunatic king speak i have a letter guessingly set down which came from one that's of a neutral heart and not from one opposed cunning and false where hast thou sent the king to dover wherefore to dover 
wast thou not charged at peril wherefore to dover let him first answer that ah i am tied to the stake and i must stand the course wherefore to dover sir because sir i would not see thy cruel nails pluck out his poor old eyes nor thy fair sister in his anointed flesh stick boorish fangs the sea with such a storm as his bare head in hell black night endured would have buoyed up and quenched the stelled fires yet poor old heart he hoped the heavens to rain if wolves had at thy gate howled that stern time thou shouldst have said good porter turn the key all cruels then subscribed but i should see the winged vengeance overtake such children see it shalt thou never fellows hold the chair upon these eyes of thine i'll set my foot gloucester is held down in his chair while cornwall plucks out one of his eyes and sets his foot on it <gasps> he, he that will sing to live till he be old give me some help oh cruel oh you gods one side will mock another the other too if you see vengeance hold your hand my lord i have served you ever since i was a child but better service have i never done you than now to bid you hold <laughs> how now you dog if you did wear a beard upon your chin i'd shake it on this quarrel what do you mean my villain draws and runs at him nay then come on and take the chance of anger draws they fight cornwall is wounded regan to another servant give me thy sword a peasant stand up thus snatches a sword comes behind and stabs him oh i am slain my lord you have one eye left to see some mischief on him oh dies lest it see more prevent it out vile jelly where is thy lustre now tears out gloucester's other eye and throws it on the ground oh, oh dark and comfortless where's my son edmund edmund enkindle all the sparks of nature to quit this horrid act out treacherous villain thou callst on him that hates thee it was he that made the overture of thy treasons to us who is too good to pity thee oh, my follies <laughs> then edgar was abused kind gods forgive me that and prosper him go thrust him out at gates and let him smell his way to dover how is it my lord how look you uh, um, i have received a hurt follow me lady turn out that eyeless villain throw the slave upon the dunghill regan i uh, bleed apace untimely comes this hurt <laughs> give me your arm exit cornwall led by regan servants unbind gloucester and lead him out oh never care what wickedness i do if this man come to good if she live long and in the end meet the old course of death women will all turn monsters let's follow the old earl and get the bedlam to lead him where he would his roguish madness allows itself to anything go thou i'll fetch some flax and whites of eggs to apply to his bleeding face oh, now heaven help him Exeunt. end of act three
Act Four of the Tragedy of King Lear by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One, The Heath. Enter Edgar. Yet better thus, and known to be contemned, than still contemned and flattered, to be worst the lowest and most dejected thing of fortune stands still in esperance lives not in fear the lamentable change is from the best the worst returns to laughter welcome then thou unsubstantial air that i embrace the wretch that thou hast blown unto the worst owes nothing to thy blasts enter gloucester led by an old man but who comes here my father poorly led world world o oh world but that thy strange mutations make us hate thee life would not yield to age oh my good lord i have been your tenant and your father's tenant these fourscore years away oh get thee away good friend be gone thy comforts can do me no good at all thee they may hurt you cannot see your way i have no way and therefore want no eyes i stumbled when i saw for oft tis seen our means secure us and our mere defects prove our commodities. Oh, dear son Edgar, the food of thy abused father's wrath. Might I but live to see thee in my touch, I'd say I had eyes again. How now? Who's there? Edgar aside. Oh, gods! Who is it can say I am the worst? I am worse than ever I was. Tis poor mad Tom. Edgar aside. And worse I may be yet. The worst is not, so long as we can say, this is the worst. Fellow, where goest? Is, is it a beggar man? Madman and beggar too he has some reason else he could not beg ere the last night's storm i such a fellow saw which made me think a man a worm my son came then into my mind and yet my mind was then scarce friends with him i have heard more since as flies to wanton boys are we to the gods they kill us for their sport Edgar aside. How should this be? Bad is the trade that must play fool to sorrow, angering itself and others. Bless thee, master. Is that the naked fellow? Ay, my lord. Then pray thee get thee away. If for my sake thou wilt overtake us hence a mile or twain, in the way to Dover. Do it for ancient love, and bring some covering for this naked soul, which I'll entreat to lead me. Alack, sir, he is mad. Tis the time's plague when madmen lead the blind. Do as I bid thee, or rather do thy pleasure. Above the rest, be gone. I'll bring him the best peril that I have, come on to what will. Exit. Said I, naked fellow. Poor Tom's a cold. Aside. I cannot daub it further. Come hither, fellow. Edgar, aside. And yet I must. Bless thy sweet eyes. They bleed. Knowest thou the way to Dover? Both thy and gate, 
causeway and footpath poor tom has been scared out of his good wits bless thee good man's son from the foul fiend five fiends have been in poor tom at once of lust as obidicot hobididens prince of darkness mahu of stealing modo of murder fliberty gibbet of mopping and mowing who since possesses chambermaids and waiting women so bless thee master here take this paris thou whom the heaven's plagues have humbled to our strikes that i am wretched makes thee the happier heaven still says still let the superfluous and lust-dieted man that slaves your ordinance that will not see because he does not feel feel your power quickly so distribution should undo excess and each man have enough dost thou know dover ay master there is a cliff whose high and bending head looks fearfully in the confined tip bring me but to the very brim of it and i'll repair the misery thou dost bear with something rich about me from that place i shall no leading need give me thy arm poor tom shall lead thee Exeunt. Scene two. Before the Duke of Albany's palace. Enter Goneril, Edmund, Oswald meeting them. Welcome, my lord. I marvel at our mild husband not met us on the way. Now, where's your master? Madam, within. But never man so changed. I told him of the army that was landed he smiled at it i told him you were coming his answer was the worse of gloucester's treachery and of the loyal service of his son when i informed him then he called me sot and told me i had turned the wrong side out what most he should dislike seems pleasant to him what like offensive goneril to edmund then shall you go no further it is a cowish terror of his spirit that dares not undertake he'll not fear wrongs which tie him to an answer i wish his on the way may prove effects back edmund to my brother hasten his masters and conduct his powers i must change names at home and give the distaff into my husband's hands this trusty servant shall pass between us. Ere long you are lagged to hear, if you dare venture in your own behalf, the mistress's command. Giving a favor. Wear this. Spare speech. Decline your head. This kiss, if it dares speak, would stretch thy spirits up into the air. Conceive, and fare thee well. Yours in the ranks of death. Exit Edmund. My most dearest Gloucester, oh, the difference of man and man. To thee a woman's services are due. A fool usurps my body. Madam, here comes my lord. Exit. Enter Albany. Ha! I have been worth the whiffs. Oh, Goneril you are not worth the dust which the rude wind blows in your face i fear your disposition that nature which contemns its origin cannot be bordered certain in itself she that herself will sliver and disbranch from her material sap perforce must wither and come to deadly use no more the text is foolish wisdom and goodness to the vile seem vile filths savour but themselves what have you done tigers not daughters what have you performed 
a father, and a gracious, aged man, whose reverence even the head-lugged bear would lick, most barbarous, most degenerate, have you madded? Could my good brother suffer you to do it? A man, a prince, by him so benefited! If that the heavens do not their visible spirits send quickly down to tame these vile offences, it will come. Humanity must perforce prey on itself like monsters of the deep. Milk livid man, that bears the cheek for blows, a head for wrongs. Who has not in thy brows an eye discerning thine honour from thy suffering? Let not knowest fools do those villains pity who are punished ere they have done their mischief. Where is thy drum? France spreads his banners in our noiseless land. With plumed helm thy state begins to threat, whilst thou, a moral fool, sitst still and criest, Alack, why does he so? See thyself, devil, proper deformity seems not in the fiend so horrid as in woman. O oh, vain fool! Thou changed and self-covered thing, for shame! Be monster not thy feature! Wert my fitness to let these hands obey my blood? They are apt enough to dislocate and tear thy flesh and bones. Howe'er thou art a fiend, a woman shaped doth shield thee. Mary, your manhood, Mew. Enter a messenger. What news? Oh, my good lord, the Duke of Cornwall's dead, slain by his servant going to put out the other eye of Gloucester. Gloucester's eyes? A servant that he bred, thrilled with remorse, opposed against the act, bending his sword to his great master, who, thereat enraged, flew on him, and amongst them felled him dead, but not without that harmful stroke which since hath plucked him after. This shows you are above you, justicers, that these are nether crimes so speedily can venge. But, oh, poor Gloucester, lost he his other eye? Both, both, my lord, this letter, madam, craves a speedy answer. Tis from your sister. Goneril aside. One way I like this will, but being widow, and my Gloucester with her, may all the building in my fancy pluck upon my hateful life. Another way the news is not so tart. I'll read and answer. Exit. Where was his son when they did take his eyes? Come with my lady hither. He is not here? No, my good lord, I met him back again. Knows he the wickedness? Aye, my good lord, t'was he informed against him, and quit the house on purpose, that their punishment might have the freer course. Gloucester, I live to thank thee for the love thou showedst the king, and to revenge thine eyes. Come hither, friend. Tell me what more thou knowest. Exeunt. Scene three. The French camp near Dover. Enter Kent and a gentleman. Why the king of France is so suddenly gone back, know you no reason? Something he left imperfect in the state, which since his coming forth is thought of, which imports to the kingdom so much fear and danger, that his personal return was most required and necessary. Who hath he left behind him, general? the marechal of france monsieur lafar did your letters pierce the queen to any demonstration of grief ay sir she took them read them in my presence and now and then an ample tear trilled down her delicate cheek it seemed she was a queen over her passion who most rebel-like sought to be king o'er her oh then it moved her not to a rage patience and sorrow strove who should express her goodliest you have seen sunshine and rain at once. Her smiles and tears were like a better day. Those happy smilets that played on her ripe lip seemed not to know what guests were in her eyes, which parted thence as pearls from diamonds dropped. In brief, sorrow would be a rarity most beloved if all could so become it. Made she no verbal question? Faith, once or twice she'd heave the name of father, pantingly forth, as if it pressed her heart, cried, Sisters, sisters, shame of ladies, sisters, Kent, father, sisters, what to the storm i' the night? Let pity not be believed. There she shook the holy water from her heavenly eyes, and clamour, 
mastered her then away she started to deal with grief alone it is the stars the stars above govern our conditions else one self-mate and make could not beget such different issues you spoke not with her since no was this before the king returned no since well sir the poor distressed leers of the town who sometime in his better tune remembers what we came about and by no means will yield to see his daughter why good sir a sovereign shame so elbows him his own unkindness that stripped her from his benediction turned her to foreign casualties gave her dear rights to his dog-hearted daughters these things sting his mind so venomously that burning shame detains him from cordelia alack poor gentleman of albany's and cornwall's powers you heard not tis so they are afoot well sir i'll bring you to our master lear and leave you to attend him some dear cause will in concealment wrap me up a while when i am known aright you shall not grieve lending me this acquaintance i pray you go along with me exeunt scene four the french camp a tent enter with drum and colours cordelia physician and soldiers alack this he why he was met even now as mad as the vexed sea singing aloud crowned with rank fumiter and furrow weeds with harlocks hemlock nettles cuckoo flowers darnel and all the idle weeds that grow in our sustaining corn a century sent forth search every acre in the high-grown field and bring him to our eye exit an officer what can man's wisdom in the restoring his bereaved sense he that helps him take all my outward worth there is means madam our foster nurse of nature is repose the which she lacks that to provoke in him are many simples operative whose power will close the eye of anguish all blessed secrets all you unpublished virtues of the earth spring with my tears be aidant and remediate in the good man's distress seek seek for him lest his ungoverned rage dissolve the life that wants the means to lead it enter a messenger news madam the british powers are marching hitherward tis known before our preparation stands in expectation of them o oh, dear father it is thy business that i go about therefore great france my mourning and important tears hath pitied no blown ambition doth our arms incite but love dear love and our aged father's right soon may i hear and see him Exeunt. scene five a room in gloucester's castle enter regan and oswald but are my brother's powers set forth ay madam himself in person there madam with much ado your sister is the better soldier lord edmund spake not with your lord at home no madam what might import my sister's letter to him i know not lady faith he is posted hence on serious matter oh, it was great ignorance gloucester's eyes being out to let him live where he arrives he moves all hearts against us edmund i think is gone in pity of his misery to dispatch his knighted life moreover to descry the strength of the enemy i must needs after him madam with my letter our troops set forth to-morrow stay with us the ways are dangerous i may not madam my lady charged my duty in this business why should she write to edmund might not you transport her purposes by word be like some things i know not what i love thee much let me unseal the letter madam i had rather i know your lady does not love her husband i am sure of that 
and at her late being here she gave strange a yards and most speaking looks to noble edmund i know you are of her bosom ay madam i speak in understanding ye are i know it therefore i do advise you to take this note my lord is dead edmund and i have talked and more convenient is he for my hand than for your lady's you may gather more if you do find him pray you give him this and when your mistress hears thus much from you i pray desire her call her wisdom to her so fare you well if you do chance to hear of that blind traitor preferment falls on him that cuts him off would i could meet him madam i should show what party i do follow fare thee well exeunt scene six the country near dover enter gloucester and edgar dressed like a peasant when shall i come to the top of that same hill you do climb up it now look how we labour methinks the ground is even horrible steep hark do you hear the sea no truly why then your other senses grow imperfect by your eyes anguish so may it be indeed methinks thy voice is altered and thou speakst in better phrase and matter than thou didst you are much deceived in nothing am i changed but in my garments methinks you're better spoken come on sir here's the place stand still how fearful and dizzy it is to cast one's eye so low the crows and choughs that wing the midway air show scarce so gross as beetles half way down hangs one that gathers samphire dreadful trade methinks he seems no bigger than his head the fishermen that walk upon the beach appear like mice and yon tall anchoring bark diminished to her cock her cock a boy almost too small for sight the murmuring surge that on the unnumbered idle pebble chafes cannot be heard so high i look no more lest my brain turn and the deficient sight topple down headlong set me where you stand give me your hand you are now within a foot of the extreme verge for all beneath the moon would i not leap upright let go my hand here friend is another purse in it a jewel well worth a poor man's taking fairies and gods prosper it with thee go thou further off bid me farewell and let me hear thee going now fare you well good sir seems to go with all my heart edgar aside why i do trifle thus with his despair is done to cure it oh you mighty gods this world i do renounce and in your sights shake patiently my great affliction off if i could bear it longer and not fold the quarrel with your great opposeless wills my snuff and loathed part of nature should burn itself out if edgar live oh bless him now fellow fare thee well gone sir farewell gloucester leaps and falls along and yet i know not how conceit may rob the treasury of life when life itself yields to the theft had he been where he thought by this had thought been passed alive or dead ho oh, you sir friend hear you sir speak thus might he pass indeed yet he revives what are you sir away and let me die 
hadst thou been aught but gossamer feathers air so many fathom down precipitating thou'dst shivered like an egg but thou dost breathe hast heavy substance bleeds not speak'st art sound ten masts at each make not the altitude which thou hast perpendicularly fell thy life is a miracle speak yet again but uh, have i fallen oh no from the dread summit of this chalky bourne look up a height the shrill gorged lark so far cannot be seen or heard do but look up alack i have no eyes is wretchedness deprived that benefit to end itself by death twas yet some comfort when misery could beguile the tyrant's rage and frustrate his proud will give me your arm up so how is it feel you your legs you stand too well <sighs> too well this is above all strangeness upon the crown of the cliff what thing was that which parted from you a poor unfortunate beggar as i stood here below methought his eyes were two full moons he had a thousand noses horns welked and waved like the enraged sea it was some fiend therefore thou happy father think that the clearest gods who make them honours of man's impossibilities have preserved thee i do remember now <sighs> henceforth i'll bear affliction till it do cry out itself enough enough and die that thing you speak of i took it for a man often twould say the fiend the fiend he led me to that place bear free and patient thoughts but who comes here enter lear fantastically dressed up with flowers the safer sense will never accommodate his master thus no they cannot touch me for coining i am the king himself o oh, thou sight piercing sight nature's above art in that respect there's your press money that fellow handles his bow like a crow-keeper draw me a clothier's yard look look a mouse e e e. peace peace this piece of toasted cheese will do it there's my gauntlet i'll prove it on a giant bring up the brown bills a well-flown bird in the clout in the clout hugh give the word sweet marjoram pass i know that voice ha goral with a white beard they flattered me like a dog and told me i had white hairs in my beard ere the black ones were there to say i know to everything i said i know to was no good divinity when the rain came to wet me once and the wind to make me chatter when the thunder would not peace at my bidding there i found em there i <sniffs> smelt em out go to they are not men or their words they told me i was everything tis a lie i am not ague proof <laughs> the trick of that voice i do well remember if not the king ay every inch a king when i do stare see how the subject quakes i pardon that man's life what was thy cause adultery thou shalt not die die for adultery no the rain goes to it and the small gilded fly does lecture in my sight let copulation thrive for gloucester's bastard son was kinder to his father than my daughters got tween the lawful sheets tot luxury pell-mell for i lack soldiers behold yon simp ring dame whose face between her forks presages snow 
that minces virtue and to shake the head to hear of pleasure's name the fitchu nor the soiled horse goes to it with a more riotous appetite down from the wasted they are centaurs though women all above but to the girdle do the gods inherit beneath is all the fiends there's hell there's darkness there is the sulphurous pit burning scalding stench consumption fie 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 pa pa give me an ounce of seaweed good apothecary to sweeten my imagination there's money for thee oh will you let me kiss that hand let me wipe it first it smells of mortality oh, ruin the peace of nature this great world shall so wear out to naught dost thou know me i remember thine eyes well enough dost thou squinny at me no do thy worst blind cupid i'll not love read thou this challenge mark but the penning of it where all the letter sons i could not see one i would not take this from report it is and my heart breaks at it read oh, what with the case of eyes oh ho are you there with me no eyes in your head nor no money in your purse your eyes are in a heavy case your purse in a light yet you see how this world goes i see it feelingly what art mad a man may see how the world goes with no eyes look with thine ears see how yon justice rails upon yon simple thief hark in thine ear change places and handy dandy which is the justice which is the thief thou hast seen the farmer's dog bark at a beggar ay sir and the creatures run from the cure there thou mightst behold the great imagery of her authority her dogs obeyed in office thou rascal beadle hold thy bloody hand oh why dost thou lash that whore strip thine own back thou hotly lust to use her in that kind for which thou whipst her the usurer hangs the cozener through tattered clothes great vices do appear robes and furred gowns hide all plates in with gold and the strong lance of justice hurtless breaks arm it in rags a pygmy straw does pierce it none does offend none i say none i label em take that of me my friend who have the power to seal the accuser's lips get thee glass eyes and like a scurvy politician seem to see the things thou dost not now 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 pull off my boots harder harder so o oh, matter and impertinency mixed reason in madness if thou wilt weep my fortunes take my eyes i know thee well enough thy name is gloucester thou must be patient we came crying hither thou knowest the first time that we smell the air we wall and cry i will preach to thee mark alack alack the day when we are born we cry that we are come to this great stage of fools this a good block it were a delicate stratagem to shew a troop of horse with felt i'll put it in proof and when i have stolen upon these son-in-laws then kill 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 enter a gentleman with attendants oh here he is lay hand upon him sir your most dear daughter no rescue what a prisoner i am even the natural fool of fortune use me well you shall have ransom let me have surgeons i am cut to the brains you shall have anything no seconds all myself why this would make a man a man of salt to use his eyes for garden water potters ay and for laying autumn's dust good sir i will die bravely like a smug bridegroom what 
I will be jovial. Come, come, I am a king. My masters know you that. You are a royal one, and we obey you. Then there's life in it. <laughs> come, and you get it. You should get it by running. Sa, 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 sa. Exit running. Attendants follow. A sight most pitiful in the meanest wretch past speaking of in a king thou hast one daughter who redeems nature from the general curse which twain have brought her to hail gentle sir sir speed you what's your will do you hear aught sir of a battle toward most sure and vulgar every one hears that which can distinguish sound but by your favour how nears the other army near and on speedy foot the main descry stands on the hourly thought i thank you sir that's all though that the queen on special cause is here her army is moved on i thank you sir exit gentlemen you ever gentle god take my breath from me let not my worse spirit tempt me again to die before you please well pray you father now good sir what are you a most poor man made tame to fortune's blows who by the art of known and feeling sorrows am pregnant to good pity give me your hand i'll lead you to some biding hearty thanks the bounty and the blessing of heaven to boot and boot Enter Oswald. A proclaimed prize, most happy. That eyeless head of thine was first framed flesh to raise my fortunes. Thou old unhappy traitor, briefly thyself remember. The sword is out that must destroy thee. Now let thy friendly hand put strength enough to it. Edgar interposes. Wherefore, bold peasant, darest thou support a published traitor? Hence, lest that the infection of his fortune take like hold on thee, let go his arm. She'll not let go, sir, without further occasion let go slave or thou diest go gentlemen go your gate and let poor volker pass and should have been swaggered out on my life twill not have been so long as this by a fortnight nay come not near the old man keep out chevoy or i stray whether you custard or my bellow be the harder she'll be plain with you out dunghill she'll pick your teeth sir come no matter for your foins they fight and edgar knocks him down ah slave thou hast slain me villain take my purse if ever thou wilt thrive bury my body and give the letters which thou findst about me to edmund earl of gloucester seek him out upon the british party oh untimely death dies i know thee well a serviceable villain as duteous to the vices of thy mistress as badness would desire what is he dead sit you down father rest you let's see these pockets the letters that he speaks of may be my friends he's dead i am only sorry he had no other deathsman let us see leave gentle wax and manners blame us not to know our enemies minds we rip their hearts their papers is more lawful reads let our reciprocal vows be remembered you have many opportunities to cut him off if your will want not time and place will be fruitfully offered there is nothing done if he return the conqueror then am i the prisoner 
and his bed my jail from the loathed warmth whereof deliver me and supply the place for your labour your wife so i would say affectionate servant goneril o oh, indistinguished space of woman's will a plot upon her virtuous husband's life and the exchange my brother here in the sands d i'll rake up the post unsanctified of murderous lechers and in the mature time with this ungracious paper strike the side of the death practised duke for him tis well that of thy death and business i can tell exit edgar dragging out the body the king is mad how stiff is my vile sense that i stand up and have ingenious feeling of my huge sorrows better i were distract so should my thoughts be severed from my griefs and woes by wrong imaginations lose the knowledge of themselves a drum afar off give me your hand far off methinks i hear the beaten drum come father i'll bestow you with a friend Exeunt. Scene seven. A tent in the French camp. Lear on a bed asleep, soft music playing. Physician, gentleman, and others attending. Enter Cordelia and Kent. O oh, thou good Kent, how shall I live and work to match thy goodness? My life will be too short, and every measure fail me. To be acknowledged, madam, is all paid all my reports go with the modest truth nor more nor clipped but so be better suited these weeds are memories of those worser hours i prithee put them off pardon dear madam yet to be known shortens my maid intent my boon i make it that you know me not till time and i think meet then be it so my good lord to the physician how does the king madam sleeps still o oh, you kind gods cure this great breach in his abused nature the untuned and jarring senses o oh, wind up of this child changed father so please your majesty that we may wake the king he hath slept long be governed by your knowledge and proceed in the sway of your own will is he arrayed ay madam in the heaviness of sleep we put fresh garments on him be by good madam when we do awake him i doubt not of his temperance very well please you draw near louder the music there o oh, my dear father restoration hang thy medicine on my lips and let this kiss repair those violent harms that my two sisters have in thy reverence made kind and dear princess had you not been their father these white flakes did challenge pity of them was this a face to be opposed against the warring winds to stand against the deep dread bolted thunder in the most terrible and nimble stroke of quick crossed lightning to watch poor perdue with this thin helm mine enemy's dog though he had bit me should have stood that night against my fire and wast thou fain poor father to hovel thee with swine and rogues forlorn in short and musty straw alack alack tis wonder that thy life and wits at once had not concluded all he wakes speak to him madam do you tis fittest how does my royal lord how fares your majesty you do me wrong to take me out to the grave thou art a soul in bliss but i am bound upon a wheel of fire that my own tears do scald like molten lead sir do you know me you are a spirit i know when did you die still still far wide he's scarce awake let him alone a while where have i been where am i fair daylight 
i am mightily abused i should e'en die with pity to see another thus i know not what to say i will not swear these are my hands let's see i i feel this pinprick would i were assured of my condition oh look upon me sir and hold your hands in benediction over me no sir you must not kneel pray do not mock me i am a very foolish fond old man fourscore and upward not an hour more nor less and do deal plainly i fear i am not in my perfect mind methinks i should know you and know this man yet i am doubtful for i am mainly ignorant what place this is and all the skills i have remembers not these garments nor i know not where i did lodge last night do not laugh at me for as i am a man i think this lady to be my child cordelia and so i am i am be your tears wet yes faith i pray weep not if you have poison for me i will drink it i know you do not love me for your sisters have as i do remember done me wrong you have some cause they have not no cause no cause am i in france in your own kingdom sir do not abuse me be comforted good madam the great rage you see is killed in him and yet it is danger to make him even o'er the time he has lost desire him to go in trouble him no more till further settling will it please your highness walk you must bear with me pray you now forget and forgive i am old and foolish exeunt lear cordelia physician and attendants holds it true sir that the duke of cornwall was so slain most certain sir who is conductor of his people as tis said the bastard son of gloucester they say edgar his banished son is with the earl of kent in germany report is changeable tis time to look about the powers of the kingdom approach apace the arbitrament is like to be bloody fare you well sir exit my point and period will be throughly wrought or well or ill as this day's battle fought exit end of act four